It is Wednesday, April, I don't know. It's the first week of April. I hope you guys are doing really well. It is hard to keep up with what day it is lately. I'm sure you guys can relate. But I have a little house project I'm going to be working on in a few minutes and a couple of things I wanted to share with you. So I thought it'd be a good time to pick up my camera again. I wanted to say thank you, first of all, for all of the wonderful comments that I got on my last video where I asked for any kind of suggestions on inspiration for adding structure to your life, um, just routines and habits and things like that. It's something I'm really interested in. And um, I recognized a couple of things that you guys suggested, but most of them I have not. So I haven't even had a chance to really dive into it. I am going to pick up a notebook um, and just go through the list of comments and just write down everything that you guys suggested. And if you are looking for something similar, the comment section in my last video is probably a great place to look. I know we are all dealing with different situations and new routines at home. A lot of us have our kids at home and we started online learning this week. So things have changed and we're all adjusting and I'm sure you guys are too. I did also just want to say one more time that some of us are tackling new hobbies and new projects around the house, starting gardens or painting rooms, like whatever it is to keep busy. Um, and some of us are not able to, or maybe going through a lot of stuff right now. And so whatever your situation is, I think it's okay because we are all different and that's what makes us all so special is that there is no one thing that anyone should be doing and um, I think you should just do whatever feels right for you right now. I know for us we're very fortunate and we haven't really been um, directly affected by the virus and uh, we're able to work at home and we're okay so for me, keeping busy is something that makes me feel better and I'm taking lots of time with my family because they're here all the time. That's another video. But um, doing projects and knitting and finding new patterns and all that stuff is something that I just find very therapeutic. So whatever it is that makes you feel good, that is what you should be doing. There is no right and there is no wrong Thing. And just because I'm filming projects and cooking and baking, um, that's just a snippet of my day or of my week. So it's not always like that. There are times that I'm too tired to cook and I don't feel like baking anything. And we're just kind of relaxing and working on school stuff and all of that. So I just wanted to say that. I'm sure you all know it, but I thought it was a good time to remind everyone that we are all just doing the best that we can. So I have a couple of things I want to share right away. Before I get started on my little house project and get totally sidetracked, I just wanted to share a couple of things that I'm really loving right now so that I don't forget. You guys know that I am a huge fan of the No Crumbs Left cookbook and I love Terry. She is the cookbook author and she has a wonderful Instagram account that I follow. I love watching her stories almost every day. Um, her energy and her positivity is just so uplifting and inspiring. So if you are a fan, or if you haven't heard about her, you should check this out because um, earlier this week, it might have been on the weekend, they offered this free kind of booklet that I've downloaded and put on my iPad. It's called Rise and Shine, A Quarantine Thrive Guide. I'm not sure if this is just available to everyone or if you have to subscribe to her newsletter, which doesn't cost you anything anyway. So if this looks like something you would like, you should totally download it while it's available. Um, it's 42 pages. It's really beautiful. So she's put together kind of like this mini book of things that you should keep in your house, how to stock your pantry, stocking up, what you should keep in your fridge. I really love this. And it's beautifully done. The pictures are gorgeous. There she is. I love Terry. 
And she's got some of her um, popular recipes in here. And I think, I haven't even read it yet, but I think they're kind of things that you probably have ingredients for. So, oh my gosh, I've been looking for rhubarb in the grocery store for weeks, the few times that I've been, and I can't find it yet. And mine is not growing yet either. Create, look at these pictures. Her photography is beautiful. There are the marinated onions. So anyways, I thought this was something really great to share. I really, um, I really like her. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I also got this cream a little while ago and I'm really enjoying it. It's the Burt's Bees Almond and Milk Hand Cream. It's quite thick. It's not the easiest to um, get out of the jar and put on, but if you guys are washing your hands like I am, my hands are just destroyed. My um, nails are so dry too that they're chipping. And I really, really like this scent. It is almond and milk. So it's a really soft scent. I put it on the other day and James said it smelled like some kind of candy. And I also got this just yesterday. I've heard so many good things about it, but seeing Christopher Allen rave about this, I think he even read it a second time in the last few weeks. I just couldn't resist, so I ordered this online. It is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And I've just, I've seen so many celebrities and people talking about it. It's got great reviews. So I think this is going to be my read in the next few weeks when I can kind of carve out the time. I'm not a huge reader, but um, I'm going to try. So now I'm going to kind of prep. I've got some things going on. I think I showed you guys in a previous vlog that I wanted to take this mirror down. I removed it from my front entrance over here. And so Glenn just moved a hook for me. This one's gonna be covered, so it's fine. I'm gonna patch this up and um, hang up my new mirror and just see if I can spruce this little section up a little bit. The wall looks terrible, but I think it's just the shadows. I've got my paint out to touch up a few spots on my front door. And I've even got paint to touch up a little bit of my walls um, when they were patched up last time. But because I'm patching again, I might just wait and do that touch up tomorrow. I, also, if you guys have boys, can you tell me, am I the only one that has these, let's see if I can get out of like, look at the marks all over the walls. I don't know if it's when they come home from school and their hands are dirty. I know I have, um, Camden is a bit of an artist and when he draws with pencil, it is all over his hands. And then I'm not sure why he feels the need to touch the walls, but I can't get it out with soap and water. So I might have to touch up my walls too, because that is just grimy and bothering me. touched up the paint on my front door, I've hung up the new mirror, and I patched up a couple of little spots, and I just took out the paint to not paint over what I patched today because that has to dry and be sanded, but I was going to touch up the wall around the entrance and a few other spots that were previously patched up, and I knew I had some paint, but I just pulled it out. This is my main color, which is Revere Pewter, and not gonna work you guys. Look at
at this. The paint is completely solidified on the bottom and there's oil on the top and the can is all rusty. So that's going to have to be disposed of. And it looks like I'm going to need more paint to do the touching up. So that will have to wait, but I'm just going to put a few things back in the entrance and maybe um, redo the little shelf thing that I have up there. And I'd like to put up some hooks too. I just am trying to figure out where I want them. So I was just rearranging the little shelf and the items that I had on it for the front entrance, just to try and switch things up and make it look fresh. So I swapped out the photo and the frame that was there for something I had in the house. And I've been kind of shopping my house, looking around for something. And I decided to make these cute little fabric embroidery hoop things. I'm sure you've seen them before. I've got them hanging in my sewing space and in some other spots in the house. And I just went through some bins. I've made a little bit of a mess. I will tidy that up. Just looking for some really pretty fabrics. So I had the hoops, I had the fabrics. I didn't have white glue, so I'm just using a bit of Mod Podge. I'm going to put it on the outside of this ring so that when I pop it in there, the fabric will kind of stay nice and tight. And then that will be it. Afterwards, I just kind of push, I trim it and I push in the edges with a little bit more glue if you have it. So that's it. I'm going to finish this one and finish up my little ledge in the front entrance. with what I did in the front entrance. I'm not able to finish it completely because I should do the paint. I really need to touch up some spots here and here, but I'm loving this new mirror. I just think it looks so much better here. This was from wayfair.com. It's really pretty. And I love what I did on this little shelf. I ended up just swapping out this print in a frame from upstairs with the one that was here and I might just switch them around once in a while. I put up my little embroidery hoops with fabric and I put this little cute little lantern thing that I had already and I've even put my spring mat down. I love this mat. I got it at Ikea last year. It's really pretty. I think our forecast has some snow next week so I don't know, but I just really felt like it. The only thing I didn't do, and I love these hooks from Ikea, is I really wanted to put a hook up here, but it's just not looking right. Um, I just don't think it's going to look right if I do it. So I've decided not to put the hooks up. Maybe I will find somewhere else in the house, but that is my little entryway redo. Here are some of the knitting projects that I have been focusing on in the last little while. I haven't really had much knitting time um, this week, like the last couple of days, but over the weekend, I, I did do quite a bit of knitting. I took some time and I really plugged away on my Vertices Unite. I really love this shawl. I think it's beautiful, but this first section is like a bit of a chore. As you can see, it's really, really big or long. Um, it took me a really long time to kind of make some progress on this. And I made it my goal over the weekend to get to this point, which is where you stop the increasing and you start to do some decreases over here. So I think it will go a little bit faster now, but I don't know, I just, I think I needed a bit of a break from it and I'm going to pick it up again because I do love it. Really excited to start the next section, which is gonna be, I think, from here down. 
I'm really excited to start some of the new colors. This is my beautiful little progress keeper from Maria at Woolen Forest. Woolen Forest Charms, I think. Um, I love her, her beautiful charms. So this is what I was working on mostly in the last week. And then you probably, um, if you watched my last video, I showed the Golden Hour kits that went up for sale last Friday, I think it was. And I could not resist casting on my socks with this beautiful Golden Hour yarn from The Cozy Knitter. I'm loving how it's knitting up. It's so beautiful. I love this speckle stripe. I love them all. It's so pretty. So I got a good start on that. Um, I think I might just do one more repeat of the stripes and then start my heel, my heel flap. So those are my two projects here on the main floor and I have one more upstairs I'm gonna share with you too. My third and final current whip is the Felix sweater, which I'm still really loving. Um, I've had kind of a slow start to it because I keep this project in my sewing room and I try to work on it during breaks in between sewing and cutting and shipping and all of that stuff. But I've been a little bit busy and not taking as many breaks as I probably should. And then it's tucked away in my sewing room and I work on my Vertices Unite on the main floor. So. I did finally get through the short row shaping, which is not my favorite thing, especially with this dark yarn. It was not fun, but I am loving, sorry for that sound, I am really loving this yarn. This is the Joe Sharp Silk Erin Tweed. It is, I think, 85%, yeah, 85% wool, 10% silk, and 5% cashmere and it is feeling so beautiful knit up. I really love it. Um, this should be going a little bit faster because it's an Aran weight on a kind of a large needle, and I know people just whip this sweater up, so I should devote a little bit more time to it because it is really enjoyable. I'm starting to see the beautiful eyelet pattern come out at the raglan sleeves, and um, I'm sure once I get a little bit farther down, it is going to fly off the needles. It is beautiful. Mm. I cannot wait to have this sweater in my wardrobe. So that is my final whip. I'm trying to focus on the three, which is that formula that I like. Um, one sweater, one shawl, and one sock or small project that I can just do wherever I am. And that's going pretty well. And I'm trying, in between those projects, I'm trying to pick up an older whip that I love because I do have a few that are still kind of languishing. I have a beautiful poncho I want to finish. Um, I have my shift cowl that's barely started but beautiful and lots of socks that I need to finish. So I'm trying to balance but for now I think comfort knitting is my my favorite thing and I've just decided to cast on these last two, the sweater and the, the shawl because they're bringing me a lot of joy right now. I left my sewing room in shambles when I was looking for fabrics. So I'm just gonna tidy up my little scrap bins, put them all back together, close them up, clean off this table. And then I think I'm going to head to the kitchen because James has requested that I make that um, oat, pear, and raspberry loaf that I made a few episodes ago. Um, he loves it and it's kind of healthy-ish. So I'm going to make that for him this afternoon. I did a super speedy tidy up. Things are looking much better in here. I've got these large project bags to fuse tomorrow, I think. And I've just been looking around at things that I want to finish. One of them is this beautiful Wixton top. It's almost done. It's been sitting here forever and a day. I just have to put in the neck facings and hem the bottom hem and the cuffs. That's it. I kind of held off just because it was still a little bit cool. The weather has changed quite a bit and I think it would be really nice. Maybe I will finish it so that I can wear it for Easter. Even though we're not going anywhere, it might be a really nice Easter top. So I'm planning on finishing that. And then I've had this in the back of my mind for quite a while. 
I shared this a long time ago. I've got this beautiful, I think it's a fat quarter set that I got from the workroom. It's so beautiful. I love the colors. And I just wanted to do a really simple lap quilt um, to keep on the couch. Just super cute and fresh. It'd be great for spring also. So I might, I might factor in a little bit of time to start cutting. I did get one of these. I forget what the name of the pattern is that I'm doing, but if I don't feel like doing that pattern anymore, which I might not, I might just cut out really big squares and sew them together and call it a day. I think that would still be really, really pretty. And I also managed to find more of the fabric for the golden hour kits. So if you didn't get one, um, at some point in the future, I'm not cutting into it just yet, but at some point I will probably have more of just the bags in my shop. So that's it. I am going to go downstairs and bake that loaf for James. <laughs> 